Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about thyroid hormone replacement. Let's say you have a condition known as hypothyroidism. What do you do? You take a thyroid hormone replacement, a supplement. You take the brand name Synthroid or more popularly the generic name known as levothyroxine. Once you develop low levels of thyroid hormone, chances are it's going to be forever, so you'll take the pills for the rest of your life, but not necessarily at the same dose. Now, it's important to realize you don't take thyroid hormone specifically because you want to lose weight. It's not a weight loss pill. You have to have a specific abnormality. Now, if your blood test shows you have a normal thyroid hormone, you also don't take a thyroid hormone replacement. It's the second most popular class of drugs in the United States, ranking only second to the narcotics, hydrocodone and oxycodone. We have a lot of generic products. They're all a little bit different, but for the most part, they're interchangeable. And hypothyroidism, low levels of thyroid hormone, much more common in women than it is in men. The whole story began in 1891 with desiccated or dried out sheep thyroid glands. They were produced by Armour and Company. That was the largest meat producer at the time. In 1949, Glaxo brought out the first commercial product, but because there was some problem with the Armour product, well, in 1955, Knoll Pharmaceuticals in New Jersey brought out Synthroid, and that was the replacement. There was a potency problem with Armour's products, some unreliable properties, difficulty with quality control. And now Synthroid and Levothyroxine make up more than 99% of all of the thyroid supplements that are used in the United States. The pill actually is identical to the thyroid hormone that your thyroid gland produces. Now, hypothyroidism is extremely common. It's estimated that one person in 20 has the condition. We define it as a TSH level of more than four and a half and a low level of thyroid hormone. So the anterior pituitary gland in the brain is putting out a lot of the stimulator for the thyroid gland, but the thyroid gland is just not responding. That's typical hypothyroidism. Now, some people advocate that we should treat anything in excess of a TSH of 2.5. That's ridiculous. That would double the number of people with hypothyroidism. It would increase it to about 10%. Now, there's another condition, and it's known as subclinical hypothyroidism. Subclinical hypothyroidism is a condition where the TSH is a little bit high, but not very high. Instead of being less than 4.5, it's between four and a half and 10, but you still have a normal level of thyroid hormone. A lot of people are being treated for that condition, but they don't need to be, and there's no evidence that treating people for subclinical hypothyroidism actually does any good and might actually do some harm. We know that hypothyroidism is more common in the Caucasians than it is in the blacks. We know it's more common in women than it is in men, and we know it's more common in the elderly than it is in younger people. So if we look at people between the ages of 75 and up, what we find is that somewhere around 7, 8, 9 percent, up to about 20 percent of the population has the condition, at least on paper. Now, the question is, what's the symptom? Well, for the overwhelming majority of people who are diagnosed as hypothyroidism, it's a blood test abnormality only. They don't have any symptoms, and the symptoms associated with hypothyroidism are absolutely nonspecific. What are the symptoms associated with hypothyroidism? If you have any, they're as indiscriminate as fatigue or weight gain or sensitivity to the cold or brittle nails, or hair loss, or dry skin, or elevated cholesterol that are just so common in the general population of people with normal thyroid glands that they're absolutely unhelpful in diagnosing the condition. Now, for the most part, people who have hypothyroidism have an autoimmune condition. The body, for some reason, attacks the thyroid gland and turns it off. It's associated in many cases with diabetes or with celiac disease. We have three different kinds. The most common is there's an abnormality of the thyroid gland itself. It could be acquired after birth or it could be congenital. You could be born with an abnormality of the thyroid. 
It could come after surgery, after radiation therapy, because you're taking certain kind of drugs. And some people with hypothyroidism have a goiter, some people don't. Now there's a less common kind, instead of the thyroid gland abnormality, you could have an abnormality of the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland isn't making the TSH the way it's supposed to be. And in that case, the thyroid gland doesn't know it's supposed to make the thyroid hormone. Or we can have an abnormality, we call it a tertiary abnormality, where the hypothalamus that tells the pituitary what to do isn't working, isn't making the thyrotropin. So we have a multitude of different abnormalities, all treated basically the same way. We treat it with thyroid hormone replacement. Now thyroid hormone is very important. It's important in growth and development. It's important in the maturation of the bone and the central nervous system. It's important as far as heat production in the body is concerned and the metabolism of protein and carbohydrate and lipid. All of that's very important. If you're going to take the thyroid hormone replacement, you take a pill once a day. You take it on an empty stomach. Take it maybe 30 to 60 minutes before breakfast or increasingly take it at bedtime because it interacts with food. Food seems to decrease the absorption of the thyroid hormone. The dose can vary with your weight, with your age, with the cause of your thyroid hormone deficiency. And we know that there is a decreased absorption of the thyroid hormone if you take it with iron, if you take it with a calcium supplement, if you take it with an antacid. If you take it with even grapefruit or grapefruit juice, you have to be very careful of that. If you start taking the thyroid hormone replacement, you measure it after about six to eight weeks to make sure you're getting the right dose and then you can adjust it appropriately. And over time, the dose is going to change. They have 12 different levels of supplementation, all the way from 12 and a half micrograms up to 300 micrograms. Well, that's lot of pills. And the reason there are so many pills is there's a very narrow therapeutic window between getting too little, the right amount, or too much. If you get too much, you're going to develop osteoporosis and atrial fibrillation. If you have too little, you, know, you develop high cholesterol, maybe ischemic heart disease, and if you're a pregnant woman, you might go into preterm labor and the baby might be adversely affected. Now, Thyroid hormone, the way we prescribe it, is really T4. And T4 has to be converted to the active form in the body. And the active form is something called T3. Now, the T4 that you take, that's what the levothyroxine is, can be used for other purposes. For instance, maybe you have a nodule on your thyroid, maybe you have a goiter, maybe you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis without any kind of symptoms. You could take this medicine and it could help those conditions. Now the side effects are important and one of the major side effects of getting too much of the thyroid hormone aside from cardiovascular problems with atrial fibrillation or chest pain could be bone loss. There's increased bone loss because the thyroid hormone is going to cause resorption of the bone and it's going to cause excretion of calcium and phosphate in the urine. And elderly people have to be very cautious about taking the drug because too much can lead to cardiovascular problems, lead to angina, lead to a heart attack, lead to atrial fibrillation. And we know that people who are undergoing surgical procedures are at risk, especially if the doctors are going to give them some adrenaline or adrenaline-like medicines during the time of the surgery. And if you take the thyroid hormone, you're probably, if you're diabetic, going to need an increased dose of your diabetes medicine. And if you take Coumadin, the blood thinner, Warfarin, it interferes with the vitamin K dependent clotting factors. So the dose of the Coumadin might have to be changed. It's important to realize that thyroid hormone doesn't work the way we expect it to in everyone. And the reason it doesn't work is maybe because you're not absorbing it correctly, because you're taking an antacid, you're taking it with food, you're not paying attention to other things in your diet. Maybe you're just not taking it the way we'd like you to take it. You're poorly compliant, you forget to take the pills. Or the drug could interact with other foods or medicines or maybe the drug has been around for a while. You've kept it in the drawer for six months or a year and now you're taking outdated thyroid hormone or you didn't keep the top on the bottle because it's a sensitive product. 
We know there's altered metabolism. If you happen to be pregnant, if you're taking estrogen, if you're taking a birth control pill, if you're taking a testosterone supplement, maybe some steroids, or if you have certain kind of abnormalities of your liver. And then, of course, there's decreased absorption with taking a thyroid hormone in Orlistat, that's drug for weight loss, or fiber, or walnuts. And we know that there's an increase in the metabolism if you happen to be taking it with certain kinds of drugs, drugs like Prozac, or Tegretol that you might be taking for migraine headache, or maybe Dilantin or Phenytoin for seizures. 40 to 80% of the drug is going to be absorbed most of it through the small intestine. There's an issue with whether you're taking it in a fasting state or not. You must take it in a fasting state. Over time, as you get older, even though you're taking the same dose, it's going to be less effective because you're not going to be able to absorb it as much. If you take fiber in your diet, you're not going to be able to absorb it as much. And it's going to be decreased in its absorption if you happen to have a malabsorption condition where your gut just doesn't seem to work the way it's supposed to. And if you happen to be taking lithium or iodine or if you're taking amiodarone or you're taking one of the sulfur drugs, it might change the metabolism. All very important. It's metabolized basically by the liver, almost the majority of it. And some of it goes out through the kidney. It's okay to take while you're pregnant, but the dose that you need is probably going to change in each trimester, so you need frequent blood tests. And then after you deliver the baby, you're going to get back to whatever the level was before you started with your pregnancy. It's important to get the thyroid supplement if you need it, because the fetus and the fetal brain is highly dependent on normal levels of thyroid hormone. If you get too much thyroid hormone, well, it's going to increase your appetite, but you're going to lose weight. It's going to make you intolerant of heat. You might have fever, excessive sweating, headache, nervousness, emotional ability. You might have irritability or tremor or muscle weakness. You might have palpitations. Your blood pressure might go up. You might develop atrial fibrillation or chest pain. You might have a heart attack, shortness of breath diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, or flushing. You might have problems with hair loss, bone mineral density, your BMD is going to go down, your bones are going to become more osteoporotic, and if you really get too much, you could have seizures or convulsions. How much do you need? Well, it averages about 0.7 to 0.8 micrograms per pound. That means for the average 150-pound individual, probably the average dose is going to be about 100 to 125 micrograms. So very small quantity. Remember, if we're talking about 125 micrograms, that's only 0.125 milligrams. And aspirin is 325 milligrams. So we're talking about tiny, tiny, tiny doses, and the dose is very important. You don't want too much, as we mentioned, and you don't want too little. And if you happen to be an older individual, well, you're going to be increasingly susceptible to the adverse effects of thyroid hormone, so you start off at a very low dose. Levothyroxine, the pill, is unstable when exposed to light or elevated temperature, even just the air or humidity. So there is a shelf life of the product. After you have it for a while, you ought to throw it away and start anew. And not all of the hormones are exactly alike from different manufacturers. So if you switch the brand, you ought to go get a blood test just to make sure that you're getting adequate replacement. There's a condition known as subclinical hypothyroidism I mentioned a moment ago, and that's a very common abnormality. Your TSH is a little bit elevated, but your thyroid gland is able to still manufacture enough thyroid supplement. In these individuals, there are basically no symptoms, and there's no clinical evidence that treatment provides any useful purpose. So for the overwhelming majority of people who have subclinical hypothyroidism, that's a lot of people being treated right now, 
There's no evidence that the treatment is going to do them any good. It's estimated that about 20% of the people who are taking thyroid hormone replacement are getting too much and another 20% are getting too little and it's especially important if they're getting too little and they happen to be pregnant because remember the fetal development, fetal brain is very sensitive to the amount of thyroid hormone and how much does the drug cost? If you get the Synthroid, the name brand product, and take the average dose, it's between $1.50 and $2 a day. On the other hand, if you get the generic levothyroxine, it's about half a dollar a day. And there isn't really any difference, any substantial difference between the two. So bottom line, thyroid abnormalities, very common. Symptoms, very common, but the symptoms for the overwhelming majority of people are not highly indicative of anything wrong with your thyroid. They're non-specific, so you need a blood test. If you have a blood test that shows an elevated level, appropriately elevated level of your TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, and if your thyroid hormone itself, the T4, is low, then yes indeed you need therapy. Otherwise. Overwhelmingly, the answer is no. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.